It's the new movie by dependable director David Fincher. It's Mank, a story about the writing of the very famous movie Citizen Kane appearing December 4th on Netflix in the year 2020. Is this movie any good? Is it worthwhile? Oh no, I'm gonna have to give a negative report on it coming up next. Mank is short for Herman Mankiewicz, the writer for the screenplay for Citizen Kane, the co-writer, as it turns out, given the screen credit. But this movie very strongly argues that Herman Mankiewicz was really the visionary for the screenplay for Citizen Kane. And you know, this question of who wrote Citizen Kane, who should get credit for the vision and the construction of it, is a long dispute in movie history, really since the movie was created. And it was revived in the 1970s by Pauline Kael. And if you look in the movie textbooks, like the film textbooks for colleges, you'll see that you know when they talk about Citizen Kane, they'll talk about the dispute over who wrote the screenplay. And this movie is very much on the side of the, of the controversy that Herman Mankiewicz, here played by Gary Oldman, was the one who was the visionary. Now Mankiewicz, as we see in this movie, was part of the old 1930s Hollywood system. This movie Mank glamorizes that, shows a bunch of different characters from Hollywood, the old Hollywood, including Louis B. Mayer of Metro-Golden-Mayer MGM fame, and as well other sort of writers and directors that if you know 1930s Hollywood arcana, you'll really appreciate them showing up in this movie, Irving Thalberg, David O. Selznick, Ben Hecht, uh, Charlie Lederer, a bunch of people like that. But I would guess that most people just casually browsing this on Netflix wouldn't know these names. Nevertheless, Citizen Kane, probably the most famous movie ever made, or certainly one of the most famous, and oftentimes number one on the greatest movies ever list, here is up for discussion as to how it was created. The movie is a depiction of the screenwriter Mank, who after being in Hollywood for 10 years, once the talkies got going in the early 1930s, is by 1940 when he's writing Citizen Kane, he's in a ranch and he's holed up with his leg in a cast and he's drinking a lot of booze. He is an alcoholic in this movie and he looks grubby and old, even though he's in his early 40s, played by Gary Oldman, who I think is in his 60s. It looks a little off to me. But this writer is the one who is the visionary is going to sort of revive his career in this movie. We see him write the script in this movie at the process of doing so with a hard deadline of 60 days given to him by Orson Welles. And then peppered throughout this movie are flashbacks from different periods of the 1930s when Herman Mankiewicz moved to Hollywood. He was a, a head writer at MGM. He was with a team of writers. Later, his brother Joseph Mankiewicz, another screenwriter, shows up in this movie. And so you get the old versus the new, the 1940 washed up version of this writer versus the old writer who was something, something of a great writer, something of an interesting personality. And you get uh, the screenwriter here uh, lionized actually that you know screenwriters usually don't get much credit for movies and we sort of ignore who wrote the script oftentimes there's very few screenwriters known to the public throughout movie history you can probably only name a handful yourself so this movie is done by a master director an auteur david fincher is actually lionizing the role of the screenwriter in creating movies. So this movie is about the trials and tribulations of writing. The problems with it are enormous though, and I dare say that a lot of casual Netflix viewers, maybe those who don't know Citizen Kane, though I would dare say almost anybody, because I teach Citizen Kane, <laughs> and I've done so many times, I find it to be a fascinating, interesting movie. I was kind of bored by the arcana. There are times in this movie where the characters or sort of saying historical facts to characters when they probably wouldn't actually be saying those to characters. You know they're saying them to the audience, a sort of clunky exposition. Another problem this movie is just sort of slow and aimless. You're not sure what it's going for. There's no plot goal in this movie. It's not clear what the character is supposed to do other than produce the screenplay, which you know he's going to do. So what's the point of the movie for ordinary people who don't know 1930s Hollywood, who aren't interested in the arcana about Citizen Kane, who just want to watch a movie on Netflix and be, and be entertained. I'm not sure who's going to watch and appreciate this movie. I would love to see Netflix's stats on this to see 
when people are shutting this movie off, my guess is about 45 minutes to an hour into it, and they're not really going to miss much. I hate to say that, but I'm a Fincher fan. I think he's a dependable director who creates exciting movies. My favorites are Zodiac and uh, The Social Network. The, those movies have goals, though, even though they're slow and deliberate like this movie is. Those movies, you know sort of where they're going, and you're interested and excited in where they might end up. This movie, not at all for me, at least. I'm not sure about the black and white cinematography. I'm on record as loving black and white cinematography for modern movies. You can check out my video on it. Here, though, you've got David Fincher's classic low lighting with lighting in the black and white that has this glare, this sort of serious backlighting, and it creates a sort of a dull atmosphere, I found. One part of the screen very bright, but the rest of it overall dull. And, and the contrasts here are strange to me for black and white cinematography. That may just be my eye. I may just have been annoyed by that. But I find most black and white movies, whether it's Elephant Man or Nebraska, really rich and interesting. Those movies that have chosen not to be in color... I really wonder what this movie would look like in color, given that it's in Southern California and old Hollywood. Bright, interesting, vivacious, and then combine that with Fincher's low lighting could make it for some really interesting contrast. So I kind of wish this had been in color. And Gary Oldman, who I love as an actor, a charismatic actor who you know gets lost in characters, not a very interesting character here. I wasn't really charmed or overwhelmed by this character, Mankiewicz. And frankly, I would rather see a tale about Orson Welles. In fact, uh, you know, the end of this movie, it stops more or less at the point at which Mankiewicz is done with the screenplay. There's a little coda at the end about the Academy Awards that they won for Best Original Screenplay for Citizen Kane. But it stops at his, you know, when he ends uh, writing this thing. There's more to the story, though. So if you just go on Wikipedia and get lost in that rabbit hole about how Citizen Kane, the screenplay, was created, who got credit, who was suing whom, uh, Mankiewicz wasn't going to get... Key, uh, screen credit for this. Wells got screen credit. I mean, there's all kinds of uh, kerfluffle over this movie, and yet sort of stops when I don't think it should stop. More Orson Wells, who's super charismatic. There's not very many, in fact, there's almost no interesting charismatic characters in this movie besides Louis B. Mayer. Who, who does some interesting stuff in this movie. Now, for Citizen Kane fans, I will say there's lots of Easter eggs. In fact, you can see how this movie is showing you Herman Mankiewicz's own personal life and how he translated that into the screenplay. Louis B. Mayer is a character in Citizen Kane. William Randolph Hearst, a character in Citizen Kane. Marion Davies, a character in Citizen Kane. You can see how it all sort of fits together his autobiography, quasi-autobiography, Becoming Citizen Kane. So, as I said, very strongly argues Mankiewicz is the visionary. And this movie, in a way, interesting that Fincher is doing this, is undercutting the, what's called the auteur theory. If you want to know more about that, see my video. But giving the director all the credit, as Wells tend to get, tends to get for Citizen Kane, this movie sort of undercuts that idea. All in all, though, I was frankly bored by this movie. I wish I weren't. I wanted to love it, but I didn't. So I'm going to give this two stars below average for me. Average is two and a half. I'll say two stars, but it could be worse. I think a few of you will like this movie because you like the arcana. You will like uh, movies about a screenwriter. Those of you who like that sort of thing, you probably will appreciate this. For most people, especially Fincher fans who like Gone Girl, The Game, Fight Club, uh, Seven, this is not your Fincher movie. You don't want to watch this. You will go, why am I watching this? Uh, this is not like anything he's done before. Frankly, it's very boring compared to those works. So for all those reasons, this is below average. I'm sorry to report. I wish it were otherwise. Now, what do you think of this movie? Let us know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you and have a great day.